All right, so here's the welding cart that I built. Um, I started off with just a regular Harbor Freight welding cart. They pretty cheap. Here's the box that it came in. It's just a basic welding cart. Um, it's about fifty dollars or so. And so the first thing after I, what I did after I put it together was I evaluated it. And um, first thing I noticed, it didn't have a handle. So I put a handle on here. I had this piece of aluminum already from another project. I kind of saved that. Second thing I did, I went ahead and I modified um, the old wheels, which were fairly cheap and plastic. Well, I put these nice um, air casters on the back here, put some five inch swivel ones on the front. I had to build this up. But overall, I lifted the whole thing up about four or five inches. After that, this sucker rolled really smooth and nice. It just goes like butter, just goes right over any little, any all your extension cords. For example, doesn't matter, even the 10 gauge extension cords, just goes right over it. Um, you can see I can pick up this pretty easy. Um, after I did that, I was looking at it and I was like, well, okay, I want to do something more. So I ended up think, creating, building this rack right here. Um, what this rack does, the purpose of the rack is so I can, up here I'll be able to have different clamps. For example, here's a couple clamps that I could hang. Here's some bit larger ones, but um, as I'm working on the project, you know, of course you want to hang up your clamps. But I have a, um, a large assortment of clamps, different ones, six inch, four inch, and whatever. Um, another thing, as you can see, I could put these magnets here. So what I ended up doing was I added this little piece of flange right here for the electrical on the welder. Still have plenty of space for my tank when I finally do get around to getting that thing. Um, I mean, the only thing that um, is holding this piece right here up is the support right here, which I cheated. I bought that at the store. It was like $5 each or so, I bought four of them. Um, now, that's not necessary. I could have just welded something up. Like I said, I cheated though. I just had to fast forward the project because I had other things to do. Um, so, I'll grab my camera and I'll show you um, little, some little details. What I did was I painted this thing. This is a safety red color. It's just regular rust -Oleum safety red. This is what I like to paint a lot of my stuff. This happens to almost match this, the Lincoln Welder, it's a 140. Um, and well, I couldn't figure it out, I was thinking, well, do I want to paint this whole thing black or do I want to paint it red? Well, what I ended up doing is I painted it to match the cart I painted it black and then right here I just have it um, transition into red at the top part I really like that and what I ended up doing was while I sprayed this it was still wet I came up here and I painted this and while that was wet I just kind of just like merged it so it's a nice transition I think um, another thing I did was I added a little pull-out shelf right here nothing special this is just black melamine. Now, um, I kind of looked around to see if I had some metal that I could use, but I couldn't find any metal, so I cheated and used the black melamine, which um, essentially is just press board. So, works out good though. Gives me just a little extra space for something in the future. Um, this shelf I'll just keep for just basic stuff. Hammer, different hammers. No big deal. But, um, I'll tell you what, having a welder, for going from not having a welder to actually having a welder, man, it opens up a whole new world um, of possibilities that, um, to tell you the truth, I should have got a welder a long time ago. It was just dumb. I should have just did it. I put it off, I put it off, I put it off. So, so right now I'm just using a flux core wire until I get my tank, which, to tell you the truth, I don't really mind using the flex core. It's a little gnarly when you first weld, you have to clean up your mess. Um, but I like it. I'm, I want to get used to using that before I move forward. But you can see here, what I ended up doing is I, I used some standards and brackets. I had some extra pieces from another project. And I did some solid beads right here. And it um, kind of looks cool how it holds the helmet. You know, the welding gloves. <laughs> so, but what it really is, take the gloves off. What I really wanted to do is have a wire rack here of some sort. These are adjustable. So this is what I'm envisioning while I'm actually working on a project. Put the wire rack here of some sort, um, so I can have a place to put clamps, pliers, just whatever, just little hand tools. And this right here, I welded this on here, that's just a place for the helmet to go. 
But it does kind of look cool when the gloves are holding it like I showed you a second ago. Uh, so this will hold a tremendous amount of weight. I would guess to me at least up here, this rack I would say probably 100 pounds. Um, being a lot of the weight back here. See what it is. Let's get a little closer so you can see. Uh, the camera's not really picking up on it. Okay, so it's like a bar going across here, three bars. Okay, so the, the big six inch clamps can go here, four inch clamps can go here, and then some smaller ones. Some adjustable ones will just be able to hang right here. No big deal. Now this, this height right here, the way that I determine the height for A, is it goes underneath some upper cabinets that I have installed in the garage. And um, another thing is, I didn't want to go higher than this height right here. Let me get the camera just in. Okay, I don't want to go higher than this height right here. It's a little bit lower than this. It's 66 inches from the floor up. Um, because this will go off road, I'll be able to take it in the dirt. Um, around some little rough terrain, but anything higher is just going to become really unstable. So this is really a nice height right here. It's just kind of in between of the borderline of you know being stable and not stable. Um, so it really is nice. The width of the thing, I, I kept everything real tight. So this is how wide it's going to be. Um, that way, if I, if I go any wider, you know, I could go through narrow spaces. I mean, really, I could go through a lot of narrow spaces, no problem. To me, this is the ultimate setup for um, what it is. 110 volts, you're just regular household current, and even if it was 220, I think it's still really nice. Now, one of the next things I wanna do, I shouldn't even say the next thing. In the future, what I would like to do is build a small welding table, maybe like 30 inches by maybe 60 inches, maybe 24 by 60, I don't know, something heavy duty, um, like I put a chop saw, at the end of one of it and uh, some drawers that's definitely something I need is a welding table so we'll see um, the kind of material that I actually eventually get the, for the top plate whether it's half inch or three eighths or one inch whatever whatever the whatever I could find for a good deal pretty much is what I'm going to do um, but this welder is a reconditioned welder from the um, orange, bo orange box store I got it for 350 bucks and the cart, you know, and all the wheels was less than $75. So this wasn't that much money at all for all this stuff. The paint was cheap. The welding helmet was 100 bucks. But um, yeah, so for under 500 bucks, I got this nice little setup right here. So pretty much that's it. So I'll grab the camera and I'll give you the tour. All right, so first I'll show you the handle. So this handle I got from an um, old boat that I restored. Um, it was the back-to-back -back seats. So what I ended up having to do is notch this original flange because the Harbor Freight cart didn't come with any handle. So I put a nice little one-inch hole through there and it goes all the way down through the back and so secures from the back right here. Uh, um, in addition to that, I also have a couple bolts a couple um, going through the top and bottom. These are also Harbor Freight casters, okay, and these are Harbor Freight wheels. So these things, I don't know how much they cost, about $5 each, and the wheels are probably about $5 each. And this is a one inch spacer, so I can get it level. Um, this metal that I use here, there's something that I had here on hand for a little while, and I figured out that this would be the best project to use this on. I had two of those. The two separate ones I welded together. Um, this is just a piece of hardware that I had also. Has an overextension on it. Uh, nothing, nothing special here, really. And um, my favorite thing though about this whole thing is the rack. I've looked everywhere and I can't find anything with a welding cart rack. I've looked everywhere, everywhere. So as far as I know, this is original idea. Who knows, maybe somebody in the garage that doesn't have a YouTube channel um, has one of these. I have no idea. But I tell you what, it's pretty cool. Got a place to keep the magnets. And um, I mean, it's pretty cool. The, the um, cylinder, when I finally do get it, it'll fit in between here. 
I did a pre-measurement. Going through here, this piece of metal here, the red one, that's just the L channel that I have that um, acts more or less like a washer to hold this down. And so these pieces here, basically they are, it's this. Got this at home, home store, the orange one. And I ended up welding the back. These are real ugly welds, I know. But this is ungri ungrinded. I kind of wanted to have this, um, this bar here was like supported in here, like some pressure. I don't know, it wasn't welded, but I went ahead and welded it. This is just my practice one. I bought an extra one. But this one took four of them. Two down here, and two up here. And now what I was gonna do, from this point on the cart, I was gonna add a brace. Um, a half inch by a half inch steel brace and but once I got the sucker built I realized that it's so strong that I don't need to add a brace there's no reason to do that I mean, this is pretty much it I mean I could keep talking about it but it's really not that big of a deal these are adjustable it's just some scrap material that I had here This up here, this is something that I scrounged from some job site. Um, I think they use it for some rack, electrical rack or data rack. Um, so I scrounged that, that was a freebie. This metal here didn't cost that much from the metal place. It's like $25 for a 20 foot piece. And I, I put this on, this is about the only piece on there that I welded on besides some of these things. Again, it's really no big deal, but I really like the look that it came out. I like the finished product. So, if I roll it around, um, you'll see that it just, with ease, it just goes up this little step here. Comes around. The cool thing, it gets into really narrow, tight spots. right here. When I did do this, um, I wanted it to be so that my head's not going to bump it at any point, bending over. I mean, I could have went deeper, could have went higher, could have went lower. This is a good height for me. But one thing I had to watch out for, because I do have a six inch bump, a six inch step right here in the foundation. When I go, when I put my foot here and I lift it up, it's not that heavy. When it's at an angle like this, my head doesn't hit it. That's kind of important. So if somebody's building something like this, just keep it so that way you don't poke your eyes out in the future on anything. So plenty of clearance on the step. It's no big deal at all. And all I have to do is grab this pretty sturdy handle and um, pick it up. So in my opinion, if Harbor Freight or if anybody of the manufacturers are building this a cart, any of the manufacturers that are building a cart, okay, you know, take the extra time, spend the extra couple bucks, and put a handle on it like this. As you can see, the wires come right through here, the feed and stuff, in between. It doesn't obstruct anything. I could get to the power switch, no problem. This, I mean, it's almost like this is made for this. Okay, so spend the extra few bucks. Spend, even if it's $10, who cares? Instead of charging $39, charge $49. Instead of charging $99, charge $109. This makes all the difference in the world. Now this is Chicago Electric, okay? But um, I also noticed that with the other manufacturers, Lincoln um, and so on, that some of them do have handles, but their carts are just funky. Um, they're low, and I could just go on about it, but I really, 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 really recommend a Harbor Freight cart, just like this if you have a welder similar to this with this same size that'll fit inside here this is such a nice thing um, what I also did is put a piece of carpet you can see a small little piece of carpet inside here um, it's commercial carpet it doesn't have any backing on it it's more like foam but the reason for this thin piece of carpet is when I'm rolling it around and it's a little bumpy I don't vibrate the heck out of the welder it kind of kind of gives it a it absorbs some of the shock is what I'm trying to say so that's something else so, anyways, I hope anybody um, take. I hope somebody could take an idea that I got from this welding cart and use it on their project. 
Um, so go ahead, first thing, go to Harbor Freight with your coupon, get yourself one of these carts, even if you don't have a coupon, it's definitely worth it, they're probably going to be on sale no matter what. Go ahead, when you're there, pick up this set of these, okay, get some of these when you're there as well, if you don't have a welder. And um, just rock and roll. This thing took me, oh, I don't know, off and on. It took me a day or so to put it together initially. And then it took me another day to modify the axle and put the casters on. And then this freaking rack here took me a little while to do. Um, only because I had to design it. That's what took me, that's what took a lot of time. And not really sure what to do, so I just start. I just cut a couple pieces and just kind of went with it. So just like everything else, the cart's going to be hanging around in the shop, just sitting there, not being used most of its life. Um, so it's very important when you build something like this or anything, a table um, of any kind, that you have to understand that you have to store the sucker. No matter what, it has to have a place to stay. So when you build your projects, go ahead and try to think about where is it going to go, and. Um, let storage be the ultimate determination as to where you're gonna um how it's gonna be built the width you can see here how it barely goes the metal goes underneath the cabinet so i can it doesn't matter how i put it if i if i choose to roll underneath there which it's probably not going to go underneath here under but you know it's a possibility but the options are there okay so as far as the depth goes with a handle here it's at 32 inches from the back wall. Um, height, 66 inches to the top here, all the way down to the concrete. As far as the width goes, I stayed within the same width as the cart. I didn't go any wider. The wheels are three inches wider, um, if you add both sides up. Now, the back, another thing that's really important, what I did back here is I, I did not add anything back here. As you can see, the uh, metal that goes vertical up, nothing sticks out past here. That way, as I walk past here or somebody walks past here, the shoulder never hits anything, never gets caught up on anything. I don't have a welding helmet hanging from the back. I don't have clamps hanging from the back, nothing. So one more thing, little thing that I did do though to the back is here is my welding apron, if you want to call it that. I guess it's made of leather. I have a little hook. Um, so the welding apron hangs back here. I do plan on getting a nice welding jacket with long sleeves made of leather. But right now, this is what I have. So that's no big deal. I can still press it up against the wall if I choose to. Um, and that's not going to obstruct anything. So that's pretty much about it though. So yeah, have the wire holder here that I made out of some scrap metal. This piece of metal here is actually um, cut off from the bracket. One of the cutoffs, I think it's right here. Um, this is just a detail that I picked up in the fence section at the home store. Um, I also have one of those here. I didn't know where else to put it. So this is just a loose. And that's just a nice little detail. There's one here. And um, I also have some other pieces that I'm gonna probably put on here and I'm looking to get um, some Lincoln Electric stickers eventually but I don't know where to get those from this is just something that just sits up there but yeah I just finished this up so I'm sure I'll do a couple more little tweaks to it for the most part I'm done I don't have to mess around with this I don't have to think about it I can move forward what I ended up doing is I got a new chop saw so this is the DeWalt chop saw for 200 bucks 14 inch blade and so what I want to do is do something I have back here this is my woodworking chop saw set up here it's the built-in miter saw stand so what I ended up doing back here is I have one main piece of wood going across okay and then um, I have drawers going all the way around and then this is built up so everything is flush on top of the drawers so what I want to do is something similar here where I take some wood Metal would be ideal, but I want to make sure that this thing, I have a place to store it. But what I want to do, whether it's six or eight feet wide or four feet wide, is um, build some sort of a deck with a couple drawers and a top that will flush out with this. That I could cut all my metal on. And even if it takes two people to move around or I build a separate cart, um, that's fine. But what I'm really thinking about doing is taking something like this, maybe a drawer on each side, 
I don't know, five foot wide in total or six foot. I'm not really sure. Could be six foot, whatever, whatever material I get. But I would like to be able to hang it up. Um, this, this over here is where I'm going to have my metal section. So I would like to be able to hang it up maybe on where the ladders are, hang it up on the pegboard or something. I'm not quite sure, but I'll tell you what though, how many times, how often am I going to use a um, metal chop saw? Probably not very often. A few projects here and there, so it has to be convenient. I have to be able to go and grab it and be able to put it on a table pretty quick. Um, it's similar to the welder. I had this welder here for quite a while, a couple months, and it was sitting on the shelf. Man, I, I, there was a couple projects where I could have used it or I've been putting off, for example, but the welder is not easily, I can't roll it around if I don't have wheels, you know? If it's, I have to take it off the shelf, carry it to the spot, set it up, it's really a big pain in the butt. Now, with this welder like this, all I have to do, grab it, roll it, plug it in, hook it up, put the ground on it, and I'm ready to rock and roll quick. Um, so that's pretty much it though. <laughs> I think I've done enough talking, so hopefully somebody, like I said, could take some ideas and look for this video coming up. Look for this video when I built this thing, if I ever do post that, and look for many more videos. Hopefully I'll be able to get all my videos going. That's another project I have to do, is my project in the future has to be editing, video editing. So, huh. anyways, hope you liked it. Okay, so I have the welding cart parked. This is where it's going to be hanging out for a little while. But I put some of the clamps up here on the top. You can see um, four inch clamps in the front, like seven or eight of them. And I have, I don't know how many back there, six or eight on the back. So the cart rolls like nothing. Got a lot of the weight, keep a lot of the weight back here if I can. I don't want to have um, all the heavy clamps in the front. Really, there's no reason for that, anyways. But. This isn't all my clamps, it's just the ones that are going to stay on the cart. The rest of them I have a room that they stay in. So, pretty easy. Pretty easy to roll it around. No big deal. And another thing, um, one more thing, is that when I'm working on a project, this little top rack will enable me to put pieces up here or whatever, like a storage almost. So the footprint of this whole cart in total um, is minimal. I've went up like a skyscraper, but I, of course I only went less than six feet, five and a, six, five and a half feet. Let's see, 66, five and a half feet. So, anyways, just thought I would get one last little clip with the clamps on. And I'll park it back where it goes. And call it a day. Later. Okay, so this whole lift, the rack itself unbolts. There's a screw here. There is a place for a screw here, which I don't have that. And there's bolts back here. So in total, six bolts. I only have four now. I really don't see a need to put the other two. I just haven't done it, but it's set up for it. So that's it. Unbolt those, unbolt these. This whole rack lifts right off and um, then I'm good to go. If I really need to take it somewhere where I can't have that, which I don't see why not, but, or in the future when I want to store it, if I'm done with this and I have a welding table, welders um, integrated in that, and I'm done with the welding cart, I could just take the rack off and put it in storage. I also think it's cool not having these other braces on here, just having it go straight up. It's really strong. I mean, I could steer the whole thing with just this right here.